Mattis at Grow Local and we're back at my garden. And this time I'm gonna start off by talking about a bunch of things in general. First off, my deer fencing. I've had a couple of questions about it. Um, and I just find that this really, really works for me. All it is are bamboo stakes and utility netting and the infamous Velcro ties. Although you can use rubber bands, you can use plastic bags, whatever you've got, twist ties, whatever you've got. And all I do when I want to get into the garden is take my Velcro tie off and pull the stakes up. Follow them around. And that side's done. I'm only doing this much because I know I'm going to be fooling around back in here. But up it comes. Up, I haven't pulled these out for a while. Up it comes. And down they go. And when I want to get back in there, all I do is put the stakes back in and retie it. I have not had any deer get in there. Um, I still get cats. They have figured out how to crawl underneath. And in the middle bed, I actually gave up growing anything because it's so sheltered from squash and cucumber leaves and the corn. There's one little guy that comes in and sleeps there overnight. So I'll leave it there until the fall. Anyway, I'm gonna start talking about squash vines now. And I don't know about you guys, it's the end of July, just about the beginning of August. And what I had all planted, nice, neat, tidy little rows that look so pretty and so photogenic, is absolute chaos now, which is kind of fun. Although I have to say, getting to the beds to water them with your squash vines like this gets to be a little tricky, which is why I've got bare feet, so I know where the vines are, so I don't step on them. With your squash, these vines can get really long. They can go anywhere from 10 feet. I've seen them go almost as far as 30 feet. If you don't want them to grow any farther, all you have to do is find your end point where you want it to stop. I have a little pumpkin that may or may not start here. And I'm just gonna cut that tip off. If that guy gets pollinated, then I'm gonna have another pumpkin but it's not gonna to continue to grow out that way. So when it's time for my husband to mow the lawn, I don't get yelled at anymore. Now, having said that, if you can see right here, this is what they were referring to as the little bump on your squash, under your squash blossom. This hasn't opened yet. This is a potential new pumpkin. It needs to get pollinated first, okay? If it gets pollinated, then it'll continue to grow. If it doesn't get pollinated, it's going to fall off. What's the difference between a female blossom and a male blossom? Female blossoms grow closer to the, to the main stem. There's my bump. I'm going to sacrifice this guy for you. And we'll do a close up on this in a bit. But that's what the female looks like. Okay, lots of arms, because you know moms, they got to do lots and lots of stuff to be busy. And a male flower, grows a lot farther from the main stem. Do you see the difference in the, so in the stalk size? And the inside of this guy, is just like your little Peter in a pulpit. Just one little lone guy standing up there, okay? So if you want, and you wanna make sure you get lots of pumpkins, you can take a paintbrush or a Q-tip and you would brush the pollen off of here and rub it on there, and you're gonna get a pumpkin with any luck. Not these guys, cause I cut them. But I do have an awful lot of pumpkins starting here. There are typically 10 male flowers to every female flower. Did you guys know you can eat them? If you've got a lot of male flowers and you're not gonna want them, just cut them off. You can stuff them with cheese. You can just roll them in flour and egg and saute them in butter. Cream cheese, they're pretty good. And I, oh, I'm gonna show you my fave.
this, you guys, is a patty pan squash. Some of you are familiar with them, some aren't. This is probably getting a little bit large for me, but they are so, so good. You can steam these guys, you can just slice them up. They don't have a whole lot of seeds in the center. A Little bit of butter, salt and pepper, olive oil, dill, whatever your tastes are. These are really sweet, they're mild. I think you'd really, really enjoy them. That's for my dinner. And going into that, I have a straw bale back here. And I don't know if any of you have done straw bale plantings or even heard of it, but it can, it's got a lot of uses and it can be a lot of fun. Um, I did it several years ago and it was a two year process and I wanted to see if it worked. And it was for me highly successful. I had a plot along by a fence and it had no soil. It was close to the highway <laughs> and I was given just this little hill strip. So what I did was I did the straw bale planting. It was the first time I tried it. And what you start out with is a straw bale that looks like this. And you put it so the strings are at the side and you got all this stuff up here. And for a week and a half to two weeks, what you are gonna do is just water this guy. Get the hose out and just water it, water it, water it. It starts the decomposition starting, or it starts the decomposition and it heats up a lot. So if you weren't to do that for a week and a half to two weeks, anything you plant in there is just gonna cook because the temperature just gets way, way, way too high. Um, there's no nutritional value in your straw. So when you are watering, Add something high nitrogen, um, blood meal. You can, add, you can put in just regular all-purpose fertilizer, but do that almost every time that you water. When you're finished doing that, you've got a lot of options. You can either just pile some garden soil on the top. If you're putting something in from a pot, this will be loose enough that you can pull out pieces and you can put the soil in there and then pop your plant in. I did it over here. This is year number two on this bale, okay? And it doesn't look anywhere near as pretty. It's getting really loosey-goosey here, but it holds the water really well. I've got, I'm not sure what growing out here because they're volunteers, but I've got a couple of squashes, might be a zucchini, might be a squash. I've still got some peas that were going. A renegade sunflower, I'm gonna say thanks to the birds on that one. I've got some mojito mint. And I have nasturtiums. And I don't know if you guys have heard about nasturtiums, but this is a beautiful flower. I used to use it as a sacrificial plant, which is part of the reason why I put it in here. Typically I get it covered in aphids. And when it's just chock-a-block full of aphids, I yank it out, throw it away, and the plants that I wanna grow don't have any issues with them. But this year, no aphids to be found on my nasturtiums. And here's the neat thing. You can eat these guys. You can eat the blossoms. You can eat the leaves. You can eat the flower buds. They're kind of a peppery horseradish radish taste. Um, <laughs> the story I got, a woman sells these flowers, edible flowers, that's her business. And there's a sports group in Vancouver that used to get her to send them nasturtium blossoms for their barbecue every summer. So she just lovingly picked all these blossoms and she packaged them up nicely in all individual little packages so they wouldn't get wrecked. And one year they invited her to the barbecue. Well, imagine the look on her face when she gets there and discovers all of these pretty, pretty blossoms in a great big metal pan, just a great big metal bowl because the guys ate them on their hamburgers. and All they do is come by with their hamburger, grab a fistful of flowers, <laughs> slam it on the burger, cover it up and chow down. So from there on, she said she learned her lesson and she just sent the flowers bulk after that. But the whole point is they are super, super tasty. They're, they have all sorts of pretty colors in your salad. When they have finished blooming, I picked a couple of these guys off. But these are the seed pods. And I don't know if you've heard of it, but you can pickle these or just brine them. 
And if you go to the Grow Local site, there's gonna be two recipes up there for you soon. Um, but you just use the seed pods and they refer to them as poor man's capers. So if you like capers on your, on your salmon and salmon sandwiches, salmon, salmon on bagels, oh, that came out so harsh. You can make your own poor man's capers doing that. And they're really quite tasty. Or you can just leave them go to seed and you've got more for next year. And going on from that, we're gonna take a walk over here. And I have taken out all of my garlic. It was a pretty good crop for me. I didn't plant as much as last year, but that's because I still have some left over from last year. This is that first one that I pulled out as a sample and I put it back in the ground and hey, it kept on growing. But it's been cured and it's been cured quite, quite well. So now all I'm gonna do are snip off the roots, make sure that that soil's more or less brushed out of there. And then I'm gonna cut it about there. I want a nice long stalk. Um, it stops the moisture from leaving the bulb. So these are gonna stay firmer longer. I think I mentioned it before where the ones that I had cut short started going soft about two months ago. And the ones that I've got the long necks on, I'm actually still using. This is one that didn't get pulled early. So you can see there is a little bit of a difference in the size, but they're both gonna taste absolutely beautiful. I'm gonna leave this one dry a little bit longer. As much as it looks really cured, it has been um, only maybe two days. It's just that the weather has been so crazy hot that it dried out a lot faster. Oh, good point. Some garlic, when you're drying it, um, can get sunburned. So maybe don't leave it in the direct sun. Mine stay in the sun just maybe for a couple of hours in the morning and then it's all shaded and lots of good airflow. But that's just something to know about. And what now? So this is where I had the garlic and I have taken it out. I've added a little bit of soil, but it doesn't, I'm not sure what kind of nutrients it's got in it. So I'm just gonna add some of this. And this is the all purpose fertilizer that you can use. So I don't have to worry about it leaching into the soil. It's gonna be relatively slow, slow, slow releasing. It's gonna be better for the soil in the long run. And I'll just churn up a little bit. And while I'm doing that, I'm gonna sneak my way over here. I've got some Savoy cabbage. And yeah, I picked it up from the garden center. They're just starting to get their, their fall veggies in. So it's kind of nice to know. Um, I do have some started from seed. <laughs> I started some from seed and I think I cooked it in the weather. So they didn't work for me. So I've replanted them and I'm going to try again, but just to be on the safe side. I've got my Savoy cabbage. I'm only gonna put three here. They do take up a fair amount of room, but I'm probably gonna interplant it. I'm gonna try a couple of kohlrabi and I'm gonna plant more carrots. So easy peasy, that's just tucking it in the soil and making sure that you really water it well for the first while. That's the kohlrabi. I can also plant Swiss chard still. And this is really pretty. If you've got flower beds and you want some Swiss chard, put it in your flower beds. It looks absolutely awesome. Nobody will ever know it's your groceries. And it's not too late to do your peas. If you want, go on the West Coast, um, the West Coast seeds you can print off a chart. And this one is absolutely brilliant for this time of year. It's the fall and winter harvesting. And it tells me right now, August, I can transplant broccoli, Brussels sprouts. I can still direct sow my carrot seeds, chicory, cilantro, kale and collards, my kohlrabi. And it goes on like this. And then it's got wavy lines that says, hey, this is when I'm gonna harvest them. So. And they also have it broken up into the winter harvest and next spring. This I'm excited about. 
I'm going to be where I've got my potatoes right now. They'll be coming out. I've taken out all my peas and I will be putting purple sprouting broccoli in there. We love it. That's one of our faves. Grew it, <laughs> grew it for the first time actually last year. I've eaten it before, but I'd never grown it. And so I tried it. I just went to the garden center and I just got three little plants because I wasn't sure how it was going to go. And oh, we had wished we had done so much more. But this one shows you, you can do your purple sprouting broccoli. You can either start it indoors in June. You can direct sow it in the first half of August. You can transplant it if you go to the garden center and get some in September. And then it's going to grow up to be what they refer to as a teenager. And when winter hits, it stalls out. It just stays a teenager, doesn't do a whole lot. But come springtime, when the weather warms up, that's when this stuff starts to grow. And all of a sudden, you're getting spears all over the place. And it is such good eating. There's only three plants, and we actually couldn't keep up with it. So we froze some. So how can you lose with something like that? Oh, what else can I talk about? Oh, I have left the dinosaur kale because I just wanted you to see how huge this thing can actually get. And it's really easy to take off the leaves. Dinosaur in your slurpees. What do they call them? Smoothies, not slurpees, smoothies. Ugh. Or you can make dinosaur chips or there is, there are all kinds of stir fry recipes you can use it in. You can use it for soups. I've got a neighbor that comes and gets my kale and she loves it. I've got carrots that are growing. We planted this just to show you how long it takes. But this was one of the first crops. Remember when we did the two buckets and then planted in the garden? That's about how long it takes for these guys to even reach this size. But I also planted some in a little short bed. I'm just going to go run and grab one of those carrots because I want to show you, if it works, what happens when you've got the wrong kind of soil. Okay, that didn't work. <laughs> I have been pulling these out of the short bed. And yeah, some of them are kind of crooked and they're a little wonky. But the other ones that I pulled, the ground was really rocky underneath and I had forked ones and I had double legs. You can get that from too much nitrogen in the soil, but I know this is because this is really rock and pebble filled soil. So hey, I got three more carrots. These, by the way, aren't insipid looking. That's the color. They're, they're your yellow carrots. They're not the orange ones. You can also get purple carrots and you can, it's a rainbow mix, which is kind of fun. And I have peppers. This is the fish pepper. It's just starting to get some blossoms on it. It was kind of buried by the tomatoes. I also have another little pepper, Thai pepper, in this pot. And you can see I've got more peppers coming off of this guy. This one's called a fish pepper, not because they look like little fish, although they kind of do at some point, but it's because it's a really popular pepper to use in Creole fish dishes. So they called it the fish pepper. Now, the tomatoes are, they're doing fine. I'm still getting lots of blooms. And I come out in the morning and I give them a shake because they are self pollinating but giving them a shake just helps them along. I've got lots and lots of bees. And I was looking to see, these are the black crim, and they're really, really weird shapes. And they're doing pretty good. Although I did have some, there was a section back here where I thought I was watering really well, and apparently I wasn't. And I ended up with blossom and rot. There it is. So this is where the flower was. And it's due to poor water uptake. So that means, and I'm, I know it now, um, when I was watering, <laughs> the squash vines and the squash leaves were causing the water to pool off this way. And the whole center patch around this one tomato plant was bone dry. So I've smartened up. I make sure it's getting watered properly and the tomatoes that are coming off now seem to be just fine. 
if you've got a nice round tomato and you've just got a little blossom end rot, you can usually just cut that off and eat the rest of the tomato if it doesn't bother you. You can also get um, wet brown spots like that that are kind of wet looking. And that's actually sun scald. So that might be something to watch for if we get really hot weather for the next little while. You can alleviate it by just covering your plant during the hottest part of the day with a sheet or something just to give it a little bit of shade. But if you do get scun scalded tomatoes, just throw them out. They're just gonna rot on you, okay? What else can I tell you about? My beans are doing well. Those are my pole beans. Those are the ones on the arch. And I'm actually starting to get little tiny beans on those. They're the ones that I'm gonna let dry and use them in my soups and stews. And I just love them. One's Borlotti. The other one I think is a tailor, but I'm not sure because they were just in a little jar that I was saving. So they're kind of a mystery one too. And other than that, it is a jungle in here. I know I showed you all those pumpkin blossoms and all the little tendrils are grabbing onto the ground. But there, there's my start. I've got one big one. If you have a really wet area too, sometimes some people will say to lift that pumpkin and put it on some sort of a tray so it doesn't rot in the ground. I actually haven't had that problem, but maybe I've just been lucky, who knows. Anyway, I think that might be it for the day. Um, I'm picking peas like crazy. I've picked my peas like crazy. I've composted them. I've got more peas started. I've got nasturtium blossoms that I've been enjoying and trying to get every Tom, Dick and Harry that walks down the street to try. My green beans are around the corn. I'm picking like crazy and eating like crazy. And my patty pan squashes, I've got three on the alley. I've got one back here and I've got three by the corn. So we are in patty pan heaven right now. And I hope your garden is doing really well this year. And I hope it's a little bit crazy on you too. Thanks and bye.